game hunting of modern warfare. Tank destroyers are the best tools for the job. But men alone with the proper weapons can be very effective and very deadly. Tanks look tough, and they are. But there's no tank that can't be knocked for a loop by a tank hunter if he has guts and knows how to do the job. Speedy piece of machinery, isn't it? But you'll seldom find a tank tearing along like this, except in punched up newsreels or Hollywood comedies. Actually, going across country, a tank sometimes gets up to 15 miles an hour. But eight or nine miles an hour, like this, is usually tops. In battle, a tank doesn't have things all its own way. It gets kicked around by the terrain. It's slowed down by gullies and trees. It has to fight its way through swamps and thickets. And it has to batter and grope its way through and around a thousand obstacles. Buttoned up, a tank is nine-tenths blind. Plant yourself in the driver's seat and take a look. And this is what it sounds like with the engines turning over. Nine-tenths blind and stone deaf. Practically all tanks have a basic structural weakness. Their hull guns are fixed and can only fire forward. A variety of weapons, from machine guns to cannon, is mounted in the revolving turret. Tank hunters, get this. It's perhaps the most important thing for you to remember. When that turret swings, the guns inside it are fixed and have to swing with it. If the turret is pointing to the left, it can only fire to the left. So this tank can't fire in all directions at the same time. And even with a power-driven turret, it takes a few seconds to turn from one side to the other. Those few seconds are all a skillful tank hunter needs to get in close without coming under fire. Any area not covered by fire at a particular time or that can't be covered by fire is called dead space. The guns on a tank can't be depressed far enough to cover the ground close into the tank. That gives us a circular dead space around the tank with a radius of about 20 feet. Still another mechanical weakness of tanks is that the maximum elevation of their guns is only about 25 degrees. Therefore, they can't hit any close-in targets that are above this highest line of fire. For example, men on the roof of a nearby house or on top of a high embankment. Every tank has vulnerable spots. First of all, remember exposed personnel. They're easy targets when tanks aren't buttoned up. Periscopes, gun sights, and other vision devices are also weak spots. Sometimes turret rings can be jammed at the point between the turret and the hull. This locks the turret and keeps it from turning. Tracks are particularly vulnerable. So are bogey wheels, sprocket wheels, and idlers. Tanks carry thick armor in some places and thin armor in others. It's thickest in front and on the turret. It's thinner on the sides and on the rear. And thinnest on top and on the bottom. To smash tanks on foot, you've got to know your weapons and how to use them. Here are some of them. Anti-tank mines, smoke grenades, 
and the rocket grenade with the rocket launcher, out of which it's fired. The members of this tank hunting team are armed with carbines. They're handy weapons against vision devices. Small arms fire will make tanks button up fast. Sometimes a lucky hit on the turret ring will jam the turret, but you can't count on that. This rocket grenade is walking death, and every tanker has a healthy respect for one of them. Here's a solid slab of steel, over two inches thick. Behind it is a silhouette target. Here's where that grenade hit, and here's where it came out. It'll penetrate most tank armor and do this to the men inside. That salt and pepper effect was made by fragments of white hot steel. These are anti-tank mines. They'll blow the track off any tank that hits them. Another weapon of the tank hunter is the smoke grenade. It's especially handy in an ambush. With it, you can blind a tank and then put in the knockout blow. But remember, smoke is tricky. You've got to practice with it to get the best results. And when you use it, you really have to watch the way the wind blows. Now let's take a look at a tank hunting team in action. And don't forget that word team. First of all, how come these men are hunting tanks on foot and not in a destroyer? Well, they might be the crew of a disabled destroyer out to square accounts. They might be part of a security section whose destroyers are too hotly engaged or too far away to meet a new threat in this area. Or then again, they might be the members of a reconnaissance patrol suddenly faced with a setup they've been looking for. These men know their stuff. They know the value of teamwork and cooperation. They're equipped with the proper weapons, and they know how to use them. This is the tank hunter's dream. Makes a pretty good target, doesn't he? No, our tank hunters don't let him have it. Not yet. They're not going to take any chances of missing that baby. So they hold their fire until the tank's practically at point-blank range. Then they give the works to the crew. They slam a grenade through the thin side armor. And it's all yours, Adolf. We've examined some of the weaknesses of tanks the weapons most commonly employed against them, and the functioning of the tank hunting team. Now let's take a look at some more tricks you can use to knock off tanks. What's making this bird stop dead in his tracks? A couple of rows of tin cans set up like 10 pins across the road? Well, put yourself in the place of that tank crew. How do they know if those cans are mines or a fake? The tank commander's got two choices. That's one of them, to investigate the situation. With this sort of payoff. The other is to back up and hunt for another route. And that baby isn't backing up far. Not with our tank hunters closed in for the kill. You can work a similar tank stopping trick by draping shelter halves or blankets across the road. It ought to work once on any tank. The tank commander has got to stop to investigate, giving our tank hunters in ambush a chance to hit the jackpot. Here's another problem. The enemy tank that's run out of gas, fouled its track, or stalled because of engine trouble. This baby can't travel but he's well protected, concealed from plane attack, and still plenty dangerous. He'd be a setup for a tank destroyer. Let's see how tank hunters would handle it. They're a little too far for a rocket grenade because the branches of the tree may deflect the rocket. So they split up to attack the tank from two sides. Two men with a launcher, the third man on his own. 
A carbine shot at the tank commander drives him down into the turret. While their teammate attracts the tank's fire, the grenade crew sprints to another piece of cover closer to the tank. Their partner again draws the tank's fire away from their area. And the turret guns swing away. The man with the rocket launcher breaks cover and makes a final dash to get within bazooka range of the tank. Now he's close enough to make sure of a hit. And it's out of the scrap and into the scrap pile. A tank crossing this clearing would probably steer for that gap. Here's a trick you can use to put it out of commission. Several anti-tank mines tied together with wire, like this, and carefully camouflaged are a dead-end tank stopper. This works best in defiles or on a narrow road through heavy woods where the tank has to stick close to one route. These men have to work fast. The enemy tank they've spotted is already heading across the field toward the gap in the wall. The trick is to wait till the tank is so close that the string of mines is inside its dead space. Now let them have it. That tank won't go far, not on that track. A tank hunting team may encounter its tank under different conditions, possibly in a place like this. Perhaps they're out of grenades, so this time they decide to blind the tank with smoke and get in some close work. A tough log or a fence post is the main prop. This team is on his toes. A smoke grenade in front of the tank slows him down. And another behind the tank leaves him completely blind. The tank can't get out of this gully, and there's very little wind. So that smoke will stay where it's put. Now for the business. While the rest of the team covers him, the soldier with the log closes in on the tank under cover of the smoke. Now he's reached the comparative safety of the dead space. He places the log between the bogey wheel and the idler. When the log reaches the idler wheel, it will either break the track or jam it so the tank can't move. While he does this, the rest of the team stand by to pick off the tank crew. And one more tank will never find its way home. There's nothing secret about tank hunting tricks. In fact, these are just a few samples out of the bag. You can think up a dozen new ones if you put your mind to it. The important thing is to remember the tank's limitations. Memorize its weak spots. Know the weapons you have to use and how to use them. And above all, remember your mission as a tank hunter. Whether you hunt from a destroyer or on foot. Seek, strike, destroy. <laughs> Thank you.